All right. Yeah. I'm uh, Leonard Buarski. I'm the lead world designer. I'm Ray Gresco. I'm the production director. Anybody got any questions? <laughs> what can we tell you about the best action RPG in the world? Any subjects? No particular? Go for it. Yeah, whatever. Can we exchange items between single player characters? There's going to be a mechanism built in. Between, uh, oh. From Diablo 3. The best action RPG in the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, just off the top of my head, I would say if you're playing... If you're playing a character on um, Battle.net, single player, you probably could. I don't know that we'll be able to do that if you're just playing single player because we don't have the controls in place. Um, we haven't explored it, obviously, at any length. Because um, if we did, you'd probably, to play single player, we'd have to force you to, you know, check in through Battle.net or something, and we don't want to have to do that if all you want to do is play single player because of the whole storage of your character on your on your computer versus on Battle.net and cheating and all that. So. But there probably will be for multiplayer. Right? Yes, definitely. I mean, the new, the new Battle.net has a whole set of new features. It's basically what we're targeting is how can we create the best online multiplayer gaming experience? And for Diablo 3, that means the best cooperative play experience, including a bunch of new features that we haven't really talked about yet. And um, also just all the same stuff that people expect from Diablo, you know, really great matchmaking, um, the communication and security. Uh, we're also going to focus on uh, reducing griefing and, uh, in, the, and in the competitive play, um, just to have that be a better experience than it was in the past. We're looking into ways to uh, easily transfer objects between characters, like if you have a couple different characters and you, you know, have a high level one and a low level one and you want to transfer items, you know, not to have to have two computers or two different things logged in at the same time. So a bunch of we're looking at a bunch of stuff along that along those lines. Will that be only in VNet or do you think that'll be browser, like an armory kind of thing, like World of Warcraft or? Um, I'm not sure because we you know we're still working on, on the next iteration of Battle.net and well, in your dream version it would be allowed by email transfers and um, I don't know. I think I think we need to. I'm not a technical guy. I'm just I'm like the creative guy. But I would assume that we probably need to run at least partially through Battle.net just to because you know people do items and all that stuff. But who knows? Maybe they have some genius way of doing it. Um, well, I think uh, it's a it's a really fascinating uh, game, and it's got a lot of uh, it's got a lot of action, which is, appeals to people, um, and it's also very easy to get into. It's the Blizzard philosophy of you know easy to easy to start and hard to master. Um, I think that uh, you know anyone who's looking for a good action RPG is gonna is gonna be able to jump right into it. Um, I think that uh, it's gonna appeal to both because. You know, there's just not a lot of really quality action RPGs out there. Um, whether it's going to appeal to people who totally aren't into that genre, I, I don't know because it's, you know, it's going to be the epitome of, of, of a great action RPG. So if that's not your cup of tea, I don't know that, that people are going to really uh, get into it. But, you know, for the people who want that experience, I think it's going to be one of the best. It's going to be the best, sorry. <laughs> the story is really cool, too. I think that will draw in players, whether they... They know all these the, the threads that have been carried forward in like the previous Diablos, um, because this is kind of where a lot of things come together. You know, we're left with a lot of cliffhanger sort of elements in um, the last games, and uh, some pretty amazing, huge stuff that happens in that storyline. So I think that's going to be a big draw. No, we're going to we're giving you a lot of that in in a lot more in depth ways than uh, than you might have gotten in the previous games. Um, in the previous games, uh, some of it was, you know, you had to kind of read the manuals, you had to kind of read between the lines. We're, we're trying to fill in a lot of the blanks, too. So we're, we're definitely trying to, um, even for the people who know the story, we're filling in some, some blanks that maybe weren't filled in before. Um, and, you know, there's the whole nostalgia factor of, like, you know, showing what you saw before maybe in a different way. Um, so we are returning to those to kind of catch everybody up. You know, it's, it has been 10 years since, since the last one, so. I mean, seeing Tristram again is really cool uh, for the returning players. And then 
like delivering the story elements, we've got these journal pieces that you find in the demo, and uh, that shows kind of one way we're going to be delivering the story um, for Diablo 3. Yeah. Um, has it been a challenge to kind of add more depth to it whilst keeping the simple kind of controls? Um, no, I think um, what we're finding right now is that a lot of people run through it the first time. Um, we even had this when we were testing back in the office, you know, people get in there and they just go, oh, I want to just start killing stuff. Um, but, you know, with the replayability of, of the series, and um, that's more multiplayer. I think when player plays, people play single player, they're a little bit more slow going through it, a little bit more meticulous trying to search out every piece of information, every nook and cranny. Um, but, you know, we're, we're, um, we're integrating quests in a way that isn't really overbearing. Um, you know, they did it, they did it, they kind of like um, had all their quests in one spot, in, uh, or we kind of had all of our quests in one spot in the previous games. And um, what we're doing is we're spreading those out throughout the world. So it's not so much of a factor of like, okay, I'm here, I'm doing my quest stuff, then I'm going to go out, run out and kill stuff. Uh, we have, in the outdoors, we have random um, adventures, we're calling them, where they can be swapped out with a bunch of different things. They could be quests, they could be little adventures. You come upon like a, a caravan under attack, you come upon, you know, guys doing a summoning ritual. Um, just like really bite-sized pieces of story, but a lot of different ones as opposed to just trying to give you a big download all at once. So I think, you know, we really, um, one of the things we did recently, if you guys saw our presentation from WWI, is we had, when you went into a dialogue, we had this big, nice little, nice window come up with really high-res characters. And um, even though it was beautiful, we found that it really kind of felt like it was taking you out of the game. So if you've played the demo the other day, you see when people talk to each other, the camera just kind of zooms in. And so it just keeps, keeps the feel going. We're just, really, um, we're just really conscientious about that action feel at all times. Um, that's why when you, instead of having to read the books, when, when you play, a, you can play a book and you can hear it as opposed to just sitting there reading it. So it's like when you're running around killing stuff, you could be listening to the lore. Um, you know, we're really trying to find a way of giving you the stuff that's entertaining but doesn't take away from the, from the action game. And I think we've been pretty successful so far. So that, that thing you saw when the barbarian spoke to Kane, uh -huh. that, that type of... Uh, cutscene type things gone. Yeah, we're not, we felt it was it was just kind of really took you out of the game. I mean, it looked really nice. It showed really well mm -hmm. for a demo, but when you got in there and started playing it, it would just it felt like you hit a brick wall almost. You know, I'm talking to somebody. Oh, I'm in a different uh, I'm in a different mode. I'm in a different. It just it just really kind of felt like it was an interruption to the game almost, um, which is too bad because I mean they were really beautiful and it was really kind of cool to see the characters up close like that. Um, but you know that's one of the things we always do at Blizzard is you got the game has to come first. You know we can't do a pretty piece of artwork or some something that just seems like a really cool idea. If when you know we have because what we do is we have like a bunch of different people from all over the company play it, and uh, you know we get all their feedback. And when we start hearing stuff like you know well this just really kind of stops the flow of the game. You know no matter how much we personally might think it's a great thing and want to put it in there, you gotta you gotta respond to how people are experiencing it when they play. You get to opt into the story too, so you can decide if you notice, <clears throat> as soon as you enter into the cathedral there's a sort of little event that happens and you can basically kind of spy in on it and listen in on it and get some story elements. Some people want that, they want to get that whole depth of the you know, Diablo universe. Other people just want to blow through it and maybe they've seen it before, you know, because it's being replayed and they can just move through and just start cracking skulls. <laughs> There was no more to that event in the demo, though, right? <clears throat> I played through and killed the Skeleton King earlier, and I never saw that guy talking to his little his little minion when you first entered the cathedral. Uh -huh. That's not returned to in this demo, though. He's no, like, uh, um, basically the information... For later. Yeah, well, the information you get there is um, just kind of tr uh, set up later, because he says, you know, we found this item, and yeah. it's the Skeleton King crown. Um, that's kind of like just a little sample of how we're going to handle